Okay, welcome to lesson 2.2. We're going to talk about orientation. This will be our first uh, talk into actual dynamics now that we've got some idea how to work with tools. Uh, so let's get into this topic. All right, so to start, I want to talk about unit vectors. We're going to make heavy use of unit vectors. and they will be our primary means of figuring out orientation. Um, just a reminder, vectors have three properties. Magnitude, I can use a nice, um, right, what is the length there of the vector? Two, they have a direction. So we can have vectors pointing in all kinds of ways. And uh, three, they also have a sense. So if I have a positive uh, vector defined like so, um, in the opposite direction would be a negative sense. So those are the three properties of vectors. And notice that there is no property about position or location. So that's going to be a key um, aspect of here. For unit vectors, the magnitude equals 1. Okay, so we've got a magnitude one vector and it can have a direction and a sense. Um, in this class, we will use the hat over a variable name to indicate unit vectors. All right, so that's the basic uh, bit of unit vectors. We'll come back to vectors in the next lesson such that you can, uh, we'll use them more extensively and but right now, I want to move into talking about reference frames. Um, we can think of a Euclidean space. Three-dimensional, that objects and we can uh, can move in um, things can be positioned in and we can uh, observe different things in this space so this is made up of all points in some 3d space we also are going to be concerned with an observer of motion Um, and we can say an observer of position and motion. <clears throat> so if we think about um, some object in space, and I'll draw my favorite object that's moving in 3D space. Along some path or trajectory, uh, we can observe this motion. So if I think about my eyeball as the observer, I can be over here and observe this motion. Um, I could be over here and observe this motion. Right? I could be on Mars, observing that motion, um, or I could be on the bike itself, and le and I'll make my eyeball pointing down here, uh, but I also can observe the motion from 
on the top of the bicycle. So we have uh, an observer, and each observer has uh, all of these points in the Euclidean 3D space fixed to their um, your eyeball. So you can think about, if I think about all the points that my eyeball sees and that they're sort of fixed to my eyeball, we can consider all of those points attached to my eyeball a reference frame. So it's a frame of reference that I observe any kind of other objects in that space. All right, so that's the way I like to think about this idea uh, of a frame of reference or reference frame. But uh, each one of these observers sees the uh, motion or can see the motion differently. Actually, move this. Uh, so. And it's a function of the observer's orientation relative to whatever they are observing. So then we can say uh, what I just said more casually, that a frame of reference, or we'll use the term reference frame, in this class most regularly is the set of all Euclidean points fixed to the observer. It's in an abstraction uh, to, for us to understand motion. Yeah. So, <clears throat> We're going to use unit vectors to characterize these reference frames and their orientation. I guess two ifs. So we'll affix three right handed. Mutually perpendicular unit vectors to a reference frame and use them to determine orientation. Okay, um, so what does that look like? Uh, visually, we can take three unit vectors such that they all are mutually perpendicular, so they all have right angles. They also are um, set up in a right-handed system so that nx, ny, and then NZ follows. Um, 
and I will designate the X, Y, and Z as the uh, uh, indicators of the three different uh, unit vectors there. They're all of unit length. And the, the right-handed system guarantees that we have uh, this cross product rule, x crossed into y equals c. Right, and you can use your right hand, point your hand towards in the direction of x, cross into y. I'm going to get in front of the camera, and then your thumb points up into c. So we're going to use the right right-handed system here uh, for characterizing these unit vectors. Uh, we would call then this reference frame n. Um, I can also create a, another reference frame. Okay, um, we'll call this one A. Second reference frame is oriented differently relative to N, and it has its three mutually perpendicular right-handed unit vectors. So we've got two reference frames here. Um, you can also uh, we may draw these uh, in different ways too, so I will use a new color. So if I draw a cube here that represents some body and space, and um, I don't have to draw these unit vectors in a way that they are located with their tails all at the same point. This is an equivalent representation. So I have these three unit vectors and we can call this one uh, BZ, BY, BX. They're all still following a right-handed rule and um, we can imagine that those exist anywhere in that space. Okay, so we have three reference frames here in A and B that are potentially oriented uh, relative to each other in a different way. Now, um, let's talk about some simple 2D orientation differences between two different reference frames. So a nice way to think about this, we all are familiar with doors. So I'm going to make a wall here. And then I'm going to have a door hinge. Door opens. Like so. So I've got a wall and a door, and I'm going to designate each of one of them uh, to have a different reference frame. So I'm going to say that there is a um, reference frame fixed to the wall, like so. I'm going to call the wall A. And da, 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 da. we'll have a, um, a Z, a X, and a Y unit vectors there. Now this door opens with some angle. I'll put it in green. I'm going to call this angle here theta. All right. I can also attach a reference frame to the door. I'm going to make the BZ vector oops, a 
equal to the AZ vector along the parallel to the hinge of the door. And if I do that, and we swing open the door, and the reference frame B, when the door is closed, is aligned with the reference frame A, and I swing open this door, then that means that AX is now pointing out like this, and AY is pointing normal to the door. So this is AX, and then this one I'll draw up here, uh, and I'm supposed to write B, BY, and BX. So I'm sorry about this misstating. Okay, so I have these two reference frames, A and B. And I have a simple rotation through the angle theta uh, that opens this door. Yeah. So if I take a top view and look directly down, only on the x and the y plane, I can sketch out a figure like so. So if I look down the z direction, then I would be able to have a view of AX and AY. Right. If the door is in an open position, I can then sketch out also the BX and the BY unit vectors. So here, BX pointing along the door, and BY normal to the door. And then we have a angle, as we drew above, theta. Okay. So from this view, we can then work out the relationship between AX, AY, BX, and um, BY. All right. We can see that there's a projection. I'll use one more color here. I'll uh, just do red. If I can if I project BX and BY onto the axes of uh, or these vectors AX and AY, I can then write BX and BY in terms of AX and BY. So uh, let's start with BX. Right, BX is um, cosine theta AX. Right, so I so this portion here, right, is cosine theta. I have a unit length vector, so I just get that. And uh, in fact, the uh, BX dotted with AX also equals cosine theta because they're unit vectors. AX dot product BX equals cosine theta. Okay. Same thing with BY. If I project it on to, oh, I lost my, uh, I didn't finish this expression. Let me come back to that. Uh, if I project onto the Y axis, then I get sine theta a y x yeah so expression one i can do the same projection for by uh, by has a negative component in the ax direction uh, that is a sine theta component and a positive cosine theta component in the a y direction and then above here I wrote BZ equals AZ, right? We set that at the beginning. So now I have the unit vectors BX, BY, and BZ written as, I have to watch my video, written as a component, uh, expressed in this A unit vector using these uh, sine and cosine terms. Well, we can take those equations and we can make a matrix form of them. So if I stack Vx, Vy, 
Z together. And similarly, AX, AY, and AZ. I can then pull out the linear coefficients and complete this matrix. We have a cosine theta, sine theta, zero in the Z, negative sine theta, cosine theta, zero in the Z, zero, zero, and a one. Yeah. So this matrix uh, is a special matrix. We're going to name this with the uh, convention here. Uh, I'll use C and then superscript A and B that tie to these sides of the equation. Uh, but this is the so-called direction cosine matrix. or maybe more commonly, a rotation matrix. It relates reference frame A to B, and I've oriented B with respect to A by this rotation matrix or co direction cosine matrix. Um, and uh, so I would say direction cosine matrix, or rotation matrix, rotation matrix, of B with respect to A. Okay. Another way uh, that you'll hear me say this is um, we have a right-handed rotation. Remember, it was about a positive Z right-handed rotation um, of B with respect to A about the shared Z unit vector through the angle theta. I gotta watch my video there. through the angle theta. Okay, so this is a simple rotation, um, only a 2D rotation. We get a three by three direction cosine matrix that uniquely defines that for any angle theta, and we will know how these two reference frames are oriented relative to each other. So let me, I want to grab my door drawing. We're going to use that again. Do this. Um, copy. Paste. All right, so, um, that was a single simple rotation about a single shared axis between two reference frames that we uh, just examined. But we can also, through pencil, look at, lose all the colors. There we go. Successive rotations. So if I take one rotation after the next, I can um, connect more than one re reference frame. So, what I'm going to imagine now, and I'll draw yeah, that also in black, um, that let's say that this door has a rod sticking out of it, like so. Okay, it's attached to the door. It opens and swing, uh, swings open with the door. And then I have a, uh, a swing that is on the door. 
uh, or this rod, I'm sorry, hanging from this rod. So I've got two strings and then uh, some kind of seat here for us to ride a ride the swing. And the swing can uh, go back and forth. And in fact, it um, we can characterize that angle that it swings as the angle gamma. I'm sorry, alpha. All right, so this swing now is swinging, but it's going to be swinging about that bx axis. Okay, so I'm going to attach a new reference frame, and I'll pick orange, and we're going to call this C. Okay, and I'm going to make C x equal to bx. So we'll make Cx along this, Cx equals bx. Right? So with Cx equal to bx, I can then, um, with this angle alpha, I can then show which direction Bz, uh, Cz would be. Cz would point down like so, and then C um, Y is going to point out like that. So we have CY and CZ. Okay. So now I've rotated, I've opened the door, rotating about a shared BZ AZ axis. And then I've rotated this swing swings relative to the door about the CX axis which is also equal to the b-axis axes. So if I look down the shared axes, the cx, bx axis, I would see the c, y, c, z plane and the b, z, b, y plane. And I can make a similar sketch that we did before. Um, I'll start with the b. So we have uh, b, z and by and then if I look um, at this angle alpha I would rotate to find CZ and C and CY so here we have CZ CY and then I can add the angle to the drawing um, this is alpha as well as this. Yeah. So double check our work. We yep, we've got Z's and Y's. And I have this same little diagram. So now I can write similarly that uh, CX is some function of the B, Y, and um, sorry, that's not what I want. C, Y is some function of the B, Y, and B, Z unit vectors. And um, you can take pause if you would like and, and write that out yourself uh, and do the projections in the same way I did before. So I will now do it myself. Um, C, Y can be projected into B, Y. And that's going to be a cosine alpha by plus a sine alpha bz. And then cz is going to have a negative by component. Sine alpha by has a positive um, cosine alpha bz. And remember that CX equals BX. All right, so I've, we've written our new rotation about the X axis. And that means that we would get a new direction cosine matrix that we could write C relative to, um, of a C with respect to B. And that's going to be populated by a cosine alpha. Um, sorry a um, zero, nope, still screwed up, one, zero, 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 right, for the CX equation, and then the CY equation, we would get a cosine alpha, 
and a sine alpha. And then for the CZ equation, minus sine alpha and cosine alpha. So there we have um, the rotation of C with respect to B about X through alpha. So now we have these two rotation matrices. And um, a nice property of rotation matrices is that if I now want to know, well, what is the relationship between the C reference frame, the swing, and the wall, A, um, we can use those rotation matrices to determine that. So I'll rewrite here. We have a BX. Um, BX. BY. BZ. Equals C. BA. AX. AY. And AZ. And also, we have the um, uh, CX, CY, CZ. Equals C of C with respect to B times the X, the Y, B, C. If I take this equation and plug it in, so I can take all of that, plug it into here, in place of BX, BY, BZ, then we end up with CX, CY, CZ equals CCB times CBA times AX, AY, AC. Yeah. So now we can see then that C, C with respect to A equals the matrix multiplication of C, C with respect to B times C, B with respect to A. And that holds true in general with any of these successive rotations. We can chain together the co direction cosine matrices to get um, the relationship for other uh, reference frames that are in some series or chain of successive rotations. All right, now I'd like to hop over to Jupiter and get a sense of what that looks like there. Let's make a new notebook. So we can solve this same um, uh, equations that I just did. Import simpy as sm. And I will sm dot in printing. Now, um, we had a couple of angles there for the swings. We had an alpha and a theta. And then we have these uh, direction cosine matrices that we can form, formulate. So we'll say that um, B, C, A equals SM dot matrix, and we'll do a three by three. First row is SM cosine theta. Second row is SM sine theta, and a zero. All right. And I'm going to go to a new line to make it a little more readable. We've got then a negative SM sine theta, SM cosine theta, 
and zero. And then the last row is zero, zero, one. So that's B, C, A. And I've got an error. Listing to C is supposed to be integer to slice is not a tuple. What the heck is it? I do. Oh, yeah, I missed a comma. So that's our first direction cosine matrix. And then our second one was uh, C, uh, C, B. And that one. One zero zero is the first row, and uh, zero SM goes alpha, SM sine alpha, and third row zero minus SM sine alpha minus oh no, SM cosine. C, C, B. Also another error on this day opening bracket. And I think I got a comma fixed there. And then I need a closing. Whoa. Okay, so now I have to find two matrices for those direction cosine matrices. And then if I want C, B, I'm sorry, C, C, A, then we know that we can do this matrix uh, multiplication C, C, B times B, C, A. And that'll give the successive uh, rotations there for the rotation matrices of those two um, reference frames, three reference frames in this case, but those two that we were interested in. Right, so that's the basic idea of working with um, reference frames and doing simple rotations such that we uh, rotate about a shared axis and then do them in a successive way. And then you can combine the rotation matrices uh, to get relationships bet between any different um, um, reference frame that's in any chain of uh, successive rotations like that. All right. So let's come back to the notepad and I want to um, talk about then specific types of uh, three um, rotations, uh, three simple rotations. So I will introduce the idea of Euler angles. All right, so Euler angles um, are just what we, we did, uh, except they are three uh, instead of two, and they're gonna connect four different reference frames. So three successive rotations, and I'll say simple rotations. Um, about shared axes um, that allows for arbitrary orientation of two reference frames. with two additional or auxiliary auxiliary reference frames.
Okay, so there are um, a number of sets of unique Euler angles, and we typically designate them um, as the with the shared axis. So I can say that I want a zxz Euler angle rotation. That means that I would rotate first by the shared z axis, second by the shared x axis, and third by the shared z axis. So this is one of a possible Euler angle. You can uh, see the notes in the Wikipedia article and such to see what all the other possibilities are. Um, but the way we think about this. I can start with some reference frame. I'll draw the unit vectors for that right-handed reference frame. We'll say this is in x, in y. Actually, I want to make this bigger because it'll get a can get a little messy. Let's make that reasonably big. Okay, in X, in Y, and in Z. Yeah. So the first rotation is about the Z axis, um, and I'll make a new reference frame called A as an auxiliary reference frame, one of the intermediate ones that will ultimately connect us to the final reference frame we're, we're interested in. So pick a new color and um, we're going to rotate about z so we'll get a, some positive rotation here and we'll rotate through the angle uh, psi okay. so we do that first rotation and this means that um, our a z will be the same and we'll have a y and a X for our reference frame A. Okay. Now um, we're going to rotate about the X axis of the reference frame A to get reference frame B oriented properly. So the X axis is going to be shared. We're going to make that also be X, but we will get a rotation, a positive rotation to show us a Z and sorry BZ and BY. So now I have BZ and BY, and that angle we'll say is theta. Okay. And then the last rotation to get to the reference frame C is going to be about the shared z axis. So we come back to the bz, and this is going to also be cz. Right? And then if we rotate the b axis, we will get something that looks a little like this. We're going to rotate again positive about the BZ. It's going to take it up through an angle phi. And then this would be CX and CY. Okay, so those were three rotations um, that takes us through the older angles, the ZX, Z older angles, a psi theta, and then phi. So you should be able to uh, use the exact same methods that I did. You look down the shared axes, you can draw the plane, uh, and you can then back out what the direction cosine matrices are for each of these three rotations. You'll get three rotations, and that means then that um, we should be able to find C with respect to N, it's going to be C with respect to B times B with respect to A and times A with respect to N. And you can get each of those, do the matrix multiplication, and then you can translate 
uh, and know the orientation of uh, n with respect to a or any intermediate pair that uh, may be of interest to you. So that's the basic idea of Euler rotations and um, there's more in the notes and the homeworks that you'll see about that but um, it's a very common way to uh, get some kind of arbitrary orientation uh, set up between two reference frames doing these three successive simple rotations about shared axes and you'll hear me use the term body fixed axes a lot too uh, we're not I haven't started talking about rigid bodies yet um, but each of these shared axes are fixed in each of the um, adjacent reference frames so we have a fixed um, set of uh, so that's why we'd say body fixed or reference frame fixed rotations all right one last thing in the notes I show you um, this camera gim gimbal I guess I could open that up real quick to see the picture you should watch the video of it So in the orientation, there's the gimbal and Euler angle section. And they have these cool camera gizmos that basically um, have three rotation axes that can be described as a type of Euler angle that relates the handles that you hold, A, to the camera. So this camera can be pointed in any direction relative to the handles. And... Um, they also have little servo motors in them and a, and a control system um, that will, even if you're bouncing around like in a car or something and trying to feel something um, or running, um, it will try to stabilize it okay, by using these degrees of freedom or these um, uh, rotation angles. So you can watch the video and see how it moves, uh, but it's a little hard from the picture, so I was just going to try to describe that uh, um, a little bit here and the switch my screen back um, we first have uh, the handles okay and I'll draw them uh, in black but uh, they look something like get some lines it's all I'll call this uh, structure here the handles and then it has a rotation axis in the middle that connects to the next uh, piece of frame. All right. So that I called A. And A is going to have a positive rotation about the Z axis. And I think I used blue right here. So this was the AZ axis. Positive rotation about the uh, AZ axis would um, give us this next piece, and I guess I should use a different color than that, which is one of the intermediate gimbal frames. I'll draw this, and we then have an angle here. Oops. Uh, right, some angle of rotation like so and then this frame uh, comes down like that and um, has another piece and a new axis of rotation that gives a um, an, an axis of rotation about the um, sort of the camera's lens axis if you can imagine that and there's another frame there I'll draw that one in um, blue and so about that um, we'll have a C X axis uh, I believe C X and this frame can then rotate like that and if I then do sort of a dotted line here 
this is the next angle and then lastly the camera can pitch up and down um, in this frame so it has sort of a holder right that ultimately holds the camera I'll draw the camera in one more color. Let's do green. And then the camera is going to um, tip about an axis that is out here, and that is the dy, I believe. And so we can get this camera pointed something like this. Right, and that the axis of the camera here is going to pitch upwards through another angle. Okay, so whether the, hope maybe that drawing and, and description help clears that up. Watch the video, look at the drawing very carefully, think about how it moves, set up these axes, and um, you should be able to set up a Euler angle type of rotation and 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 see how I did that in the uh, notes there. And hopefully that is enough for you to solve the orientation homework. All right. That's my lesson on orientation for you. Um, no, it's not, because I wanted to show you one more thing. Let's jump back to the Jupyter Notebook. And the last thing is that um, There's another nice feature of SymPy. We're going to be using these often. If I SymPy, import SymPy physics.mechanics, and I did typically do it like this as ME to give a short fit, we can um, create orientations and reference frames and, and do it in a much easier way than thinking directly about the rotation matrices. Okay, But understanding how they work and why it works like this is going to be a key bit. So the way this works is we create reference frames. So I'm going to do um, this prior example above. We got A, B, and C. So I'm going to create these three reference frames, like so. We name them A, B, and C. All right. So I have three reference frames, and now I want to set up the orientations among those reference frames. So the first orientation that we did here is we rotated B around Z, I believe. I remind myself. So for the door, yeah, we did Z first. So we do a uh, Z rotation about theta. And this um, is relatively natural. So I say B orient axis, so about some axis, with respect to A through an angle theta about the AZ unit vector. Yep. And so each reference frame has the unit vectors attached to them. A X, A Y, A Z. Yeah. So I just oriented B with respect to A. Nothing seemed to happen, but if I call B DCM for direction cosine matrix relative to A, I should get our same matrix that we had above. We formulated manually. And it does look like we've done so. I can do the same thing. Um, the C was about the X through alpha. So I can say C dot orient axis with respect to B through alpha about the BX unit vector. And then if I ask for C.DCMB, I should see that we get the same matrix as above, which we do. And I don't have to do the matrix multiply manually either. 
I can say C, D, C, M, A, and as long as I have set up a chain of successive ro rotations, I get my result with the direction cosine matrix that we got above. Right? So this makes it quite easy to think about the orientations that you're doing. Uh, for the Euler um, Z, X, Z, we can also uh, do that in one step. So we had, um, I'm just going to do it between reference frames. Um, let's just create two new reference frames. We had A equals reference frame A. And then we had, uh, in the example, I think it went out to C, right? Yep. So we'll do a, a C to match that. And then we're also going to need those angles. So we had a um, psi, theta, and V. Psi, theta, and if you want the phi like I drew it in the notes, I think you got to do a far phi for the LaTeX. So now, um, if I want to set up that Euler ZXZ rotation, I can say C, orient, and we're going to use body fixed, okay? Body fixed orientation with respect to A. And then we're going to give it the angles that we go through first in a tuple, psi, theta, var phi. And then lastly, I um, tell it the order of rotations. In our case, I can give, I can give it a string of C, X, Z, right? Well, I didn't use the variable bar phi, I used phi, so let me fix that. And I've set the orientation now as a Euler ZXZ rotation between C and A. And if I ask for C, D, C, M, A, I get the rotation matrix associated with that Euler angle set, which should be correct. Okay, that was the last thing I wanted to show you. So we are done with this lesson, um, and we'll move on to the next. Bye-bye.